We have a high priest up in heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's our defender before the Father. In a temple made by God, not man. Behind the veil, in a place most holy. Hallelujah, oh hallelujah. Investigating, he clears the record of those redeemed by him. Good evening, everyone. Happy midweek to all of you. Welcome to our uh, midweek service this evening. <clears throat> okay, let me hold this one. All right. Well, we are once again in our study. And I believe that uh, I'm supposed to share with you about the book of Leviticus. I shared about the book of Genesis and the book of Exodus. Now I will share about the book of Leviticus. And before we proceed on that, let us uh, bow our heads for our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this evening, O Lord, we would like to thank you for another gift of time, for another life, and for another opportunity to uh, study your word and to have peace with your word tonight. We ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit to be with us this evening, O Lord. Uh, may he help us to understand uh, the importance of of the book of Leviticus, especially in our relationship with our Savior. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessings that we are going to receive from, from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this evening, oh, let me check my... Okay. So yes, I will share with you about the book of uh, Leviticus and as we all know, the author of this book is none other than uh, Moses according to study. And just like what I've shared with you uh, last uh, two Wednesdays ago, uh, I'm going to sh uh, give to you about the big picture or the big uh, yes picture of the message of Leviticus uh, we will not go every text here in in this book but I'll just share with you uh, uh, the big message okay of the book of Leviticus and when we look inside that book you will notice that there are many kinds of law, okay? Uh, let's, let's take a look at Leviticus. <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 7, uh, verse 37. 
This is the law of the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the uh, trespass offering, the consecration, and the sacrifice of the peace offering, which the Lord commanded Moses on Mount Sinai on the day when he commanded the children of Israel to offer their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. So there are many laws mentioned in the book of Leviticus. You can check again Leviticus 7.37 and you will find there these laws. Now, as we all know, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, the book of Leviticus uh, mentioned many laws. And not only that, but it has something to do with uh, Levites or uh, priests or priesthood, the book of Leviticus. And when you read chapter 1, you would find there again, uh, this is the law of the burnt offering. And what is the meaning of this burnt offering, uh, grain offering, peace offering, sin offering? Okay, number one, because chapter 1 is based on or mentioned about uh, burnt offering, okay? It points to uh, the consumed life of Christ, the burnt offering, okay? When you have your uh, Andrews Study Bible, you'll find out there uh, the same thing. Uh, offering is burnt and then blood on altar, two sides, meat is to the Lord, unique aspect all meat consumed and it points to christ life consumed that is burnt offering Le uh, leviticus 2 the grain offering uh, there is no there's no blood in the grain offering no flesh no death so this offering points to uh, the Eternal life that Christ provides to all who believe. Okay? And then we have also the uh, peace offering. Okay? Uh, the offerer ate. Okay? This uh, peace offering based on Leviticus 3, or chapter 3 to chapter 7. And the meaning of this is the spiritual partaking of Christ. Okay. And then uh, we have also uh, sin offering or purification. And this points to, uh, to, to Christ as ransom for life. And then we have also the trespass offering. Uh, this points to uh christ pays the death of our sin okay so this are the meaning of this loss and in short the book of leviticus uh, teaches holiness right that is the short explanation of the book of leviticus about the priesthood the offering the sanctuary it points to only one one thing and that is holiness okay uh, that is very important and uh, you will see also in leviticus some of the moral and ceremonial laws and uh, maybe I will pick up some uh, verses here. Uh, let's open our Bible to Leviticus chapter, let's say, uh, chapter 19 of Leviticus. If you have a uh, New King James Version, which uh, the one I am using right now, 
you will find there in Leviticus 19 moral and ceremonial laws. We always hear this word when we, or this statement, when we talk and discuss about law. Uh, we always uh, say there is a moral and ceremonial law. So Leviticus 19 is the example of that. So let's take a look at the moral and ceremonial laws in the chapter. Let's start with uh, verse 2. Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel. Say, say to them, you shall be holy, for I the Lord, your God, am holy. So again, what is the uh, uh, point of Leviticus? About holiness. Now you would see this statement also uh, in the New Testament. Uh, let's take a look at 1 Peter chapter 1. And the verse is 16. First Peter 1. Let's start with verse uh, 15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. He meaning in all your manner of life. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Uh, this is a good uh, quotation uh, of Peter. He used the Old Testament uh, statement from the book of Leviticus in verse 16 because it is written be holy for I am holy look at verse 17 if you call on the father who without partiality judges according to each one's work okay conduct yourselves throughout the time of your days of your stay here in fear knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot so it always points to christ those sacrificial offerings it always points to christ but in verse uh, 15 and 16 you would notice the the word there be holy because i am holy right uh, let me let me check some other translation there because I want to point out an uh, important uh, thing here. That is uh, First Peter. Okay, let me check some other translation here. That is 115. I'll be reading from uh, NIV, uh, 1 Peter 1.15, but, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Mm. So, uh, the word there is, be holy in all you do. I like that word. Be holy in all that you do. So when we look at, uh, let's say, First, First Corinthians. This is an additional. Okay. Uh, Ten thirty-one. It says there. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do. Do it all for the glory of God. So, not only in manner of life, but uh, in all things that we do. Uh, we need to be holy. Or, in First Corinthians, it says, do it all for the glory of God. So, let's go back to um, Leviticus. Okay. 
chapter uh, 19, the moral and ceremonial laws. Verse 3, Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths, I am the Lord your God. Is it ceremonial or moral? That is moral law. Verse 4, Do not turn to idols, nor make for yourselves molded gods. I am the Lord your God. Is it uh, moral or ceremonial? That is moral law. And then, what is the ceremonial law here? Verse 5. If you offer a sacrifice of a peace offering to the Lord, you shall offer it of your own free will. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it. And on the next day, and if any remains until the third day, it shall be burned in the fire. Uh, that is ceremonial law. Also, verse 9 is ceremonial law. And then verse 10 as well. Okay? Uh, verse 11, okay? And verse 13, that is moral law. Okay? And also verse 15. Look at verse 17. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. And then also verse 18, you shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, I am the Lord. That is what? Moral law. And this moral law, also mentioned in the New Testament, okay? Uh, <clears throat> It was mentioned by Paul. It was mentioned by Jesus Christ in the New Testament. So, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Okay? So, you can check Leviticus 19. And you will see the moral and ceremonial laws in that uh, uh, chapter. Uh, one example. One more. One more example. Verse 30. Uh, you shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary, I am the Lord. Is it moral or ceremonial? That is moral. Okay? Anything that uh, talks about sacrificial offering, okay? Uh, this kind of offerings, uh, these are ceremonial laws. And in that kind of offering, cleansing of the sanctuary, uh, these are ceremonial. Uh, let me check my Bible here. I'll give you another example here. <clears throat> Leviticus 23. And then at the latter part, I will give you the implication of this. Okay? Uh, Leviticus 23. This is, uh, you would see in uh, verse 4, in your Bible, that is the Passover and unleavened bread. Verse 9, beginning from verse 9 up to verse 14, that is the feast of first fruits. Beginning from verse 15, the feast of weeks. Beginning from verse 23, the feast of trumpets. And then 26, beginning of 26 up to 32, that is the Day of Atonement. This is uh, ceremonial. Look at the Day of Atonement in verse 27. Also the tenth day of the seventh month shall be the Day of Atonement. And that is uh, in Hebrew calendar, tenth day. So that is uh, ten of the day, tenth day, and seventh month is Tishri. So Tishri 10, okay? Also the 10th day of the 7th month shall be the day of atonement. That is Tishri 10. Tishri 10 in our calendar today is equivalent to uh, September and October. What I mean is uh, middle part of September up to the middle week of October. That is the equivalent of Tishri 10 in our calendar the day of atonement this is also called the cleansing of uh, sanctuary here that's why in our uh, understanding of cleansing of the sanctuary 
issue 10, that is September, middle part of September, last two weeks of September, up to first and two weeks of October, uh, that is October in our calendar, uh, 20, October 1844, October 22, 1844. Okay, the Day of Atonement, the cleansing of the sanctuary. Look at this, uh, Leviticus 20. Uh, 3 beginning from 27 again that day it shall be a holy convocation for you you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord and you shall do no work on that same day for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God now let's skip some verses here verse 31 you shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest. You shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening. From evening to evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. So, as you can see here, uh, that day... The tenth day of the seventh month is also called Sabbath of Solemn Rest. This kind of Sabbath is ceremonial Sabbath. Right? Uh, whatever day is that, let's say the tenth day of the uh, seventh month falls to, uh, uh, let's say, second day, that is the Sabbath. Or third day, that is the Sabbath. Because this is ceremonial Sabbath. That's why it says there, It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening, from evening to evening. You shall celebrate your Sabbath. That is the example there of a ceremonial Sabbath. Uh, also in Leviticus 16, Turn your Bible to Leviticus 16, and you will also see there in verse 29 up to, let's say, 33. Let us read some part of that. This shall be a statute forever uh, for you in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. You shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether a native of your own country or a stranger who dwells among you. For on that day, the priest shall make atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest. Okay? 33. Then he shall make atonement for the holy sanctuary. He shall make atonement for the tabernacle of meeting and for the altar. And he shall make atonement for the priest and for all the people of the assembly. This shall be an everlasting statute for you to make atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. So the Sabbath in verse 31 uh, is the seventh month of the tenth day of the month. And this is only once a year. So this is what we call ceremonial Sabbath. This is different from the Sabbath in the Ten Commandments. And when we explain this to uh, other Christians, they cannot just uh, comprehend or understand because uh, they failed to maybe realize that there are many kinds of Sabbath in the book of uh, Moses, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And uh, these are example of the Sabbath, ceremonial Sabbath. So why there is cleansing, why there is a sanctuary, why there is priest, it all points to Jesus Christ. You want to read this in Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 8, and Hebrews chapter 9, and you will see there. Okay, uh, We don't need human priest, we have our high priest Jesus Christ. In the heavenly sanctuary. The 
big picture of this, the message of Leviticus is holiness, right? Uh, cleanliness, not only uh, physical, but also spiritual. That's why we read from Leviticus uh, 23 about the Day of Atonement, that is uh, to cleanse us from all our sin. And based on this passage, uh, we need to afflict the souls, okay, on that day. Uh, in the New Testament, this is actually uh, a day of repentance from all our sins. In our study of the Bible, we are now in the cleansing of the sanctuary. We call it uh, pre-advent judgment. Uh, repentance is very important uh, in our relationship with God. Uh, we can only ask the forgiveness of sin again. Forgiveness of sin is a gift. Repentance is a gift. Eternal life is a gift. Our high priest is a gift. Uh, the sacrifice that we need to offer is a gift and the blood is also a gift the blood of jesus christ all this in the book of leviticus uh, were mentioned but points to jesus christ our high priest our sacrificial lamb our offering okay to the father he is the only acceptable offering that we could bring to the throne of mercy to the throne of grace he is perfect and he is sinless offering so this is the big picture of the book of uh, leviticus and sometimes if we fail to understand the message of leviticus it is very hard for ordinary people to read and appreciate Leviticus <laughs> because there are so many kinds of laws okay uh, that mentioned uh, here in this book now not only that but uh, I I heard from other belief that uh, they said uh, why do they eat blood uh, it is because uh, they said in the Old Testament uh, blood was prohibited because it is connected with sacrifice of animals in the New Testament uh, it is the blood of Jesus Christ so they are now allowed to eat blood but actually the eating of blood were already mentioned uh, before the giving of that law and you can find that in the book of genesis right um, it was uh, mentioned during the time of noah okay let's take a look at genesis this is before uh, the giving of the law about the eating of blood. Okay, let's take a look at the story of Noah here. And even the unclean and clean animals. So let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look at the uh, first the clean and unclean animals. Alright, so let me check here. Genesis chapter 6, verse 21. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. 
In other translation, uh, edible food. Okay? Food that is eaten in uh, New King James Version. And when you read backward to the book of Genesis, after they sinned, or Adam and Eve sinned, you'll find out the diet that God mentioned after the fall of men. Right? Uh, let's take a look then. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 18. Okay, verse 17. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it in all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In other translation, vegetables. Okay? Uh, that is after the fall. And we all know before the fall, uh, they eat uh, fruits, nuts, grains, and fruits. Okay? Uh, the same thing. And then in verse 18, uh, herbs of the field. And then, again, so the food mentioned in Genesis chapter 6 that is eaten, that is uh, possible, according to Genesis 3, up to Genesis 6, uh, vegetables, okay, and fruits. Now chapter 7, when you look at verse, verse 2, uh, clean animal and unclean animal are mentioned, and also verse 8. Okay, so where is the eating of <laughs> blood, right? Uh, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 8 first, verse 20. Again, the offering that they made to God uh, are clean animal and clean bird. And then chapter 9, verse 4, You shall not eat flesh with its light that is its blood. So before uh, the giving of the law concerning the eating of blood, uh, it was already mentioned in Genesis. Right? And some people failed to read Acts 15, uh, Let's take a look at Acts 15 and you will find there that the apostles of Jesus Christ continued to practice that, that law. Uh, Acts 15. Acts 15 verse 20. Well, let's start with verse 18. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that, what, uh, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. Okay, so even in the New Testament, they practice this. So again, this, that is only addition. Uh, the big picture of the book of Leviticus is about holiness, cleanliness, uh, righteousness. And we can only attain that not by the blood of animals, but everything uh, points to Jesus Christ. Okay? In the book of Leviticus, they have high priest. In the New Testament, we have a high priest, Jesus Christ, superior high priest. In the book of Leviticus, the people, uh, they need to offer for their sin, animal sacrifice. Uh, in the New Testament, we have sacrifice for our sin, and that is Jesus Christ. The blood of the animals, okay, uh, need to sprinkle inside the sanctuary. In the New Testament, we have the blood of Christ. 
that is sprinkled in our hearts and in the heavenly sanctuary to clean, to clean us from all our sins. In Leviticus, they have the earthly sanctuary. In the New Testament, we have the heavenly sanctuary. Okay? In the heavenly sanctuary, okay, uh, in, there is, oh, you would find in the earthly sanctuary, the covenant, the Ten Commandments, inside the ark and beside the ark are the more of the ceremonial commandments including some uh, moral uh, meaning explanation of the ten commandments in the heavenly sanctuary okay the same commandments right but also these commandments is written in our hearts you can read hebrews there hebrews chapter 8 in Hebrews chapter 9 okay so the message again is what cleanliness righteousness holiness we can be holy because of Jesus Christ so this is the big picture of the book of uh, Leviticus okay uh, again let me repeat this one uh, burnt offering points to Christ's life consumed <clears throat> because in the book of Leviticus all meat should be consumed so by fire that's why it is called burnt offering so Christ's life consumed grain offering there's no blood there's no flesh no death it means Christ provides eternal life. Peace offering. Uh, this is about the uh, partaking of Christ spiritually. Okay? Because this meat, uh, this meat is for the priest and the one who offers the peace offering. Sin uh, offering for uh, purification uh, the unique aspect of this is the elevation of blood so it means Christ as ransom for life the uh, trespass offering uh, this is about Christ pays death of sin so again it points to Christ our high priest our offering the one who died for us so let us uh, praise the lord for giving us this information in the book of uh, leviticus so if you read again the book of leviticus uh, you would see there are lots of things but you have to remember the main point of leviticus is righteousness holiness cleanliness from sin and Jesus Christ fulfilled all those aspects okay for us so when when his work is done in heaven he will come back to those who eagerly wait for him and we will be with him forever and for me again that is good news have you remembered the statement of Jesus Christ that Moses wrote about me okay uh, he mentioned that in the New Testament and uh, uh, during his exchange uh, communication with the leaders of the Jews uh, Moses wrote about him and he said oh, let me let me read some part of that statement okay let's take a look at the book of John And I will end up here in the book of John. <clears throat> All right. Let's take a look at 
John chapter 5, beginning from verse 31. John 5, 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So, the topic here is about the at least fourfold witness. Uh, but in my reading, at least uh, at least five. Okay, so who are these four or or five? Okay, let's start with thirty-two. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. So who is the first witness that he mentioned? John bore witness about him. So what is the second witness? Verse 34. Yet I do not receive testimony from men, but I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp, that is John, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than John's for the works which the Father has given me to finish the very works that I do bear witness of me. Okay? All miracles that Jesus Christ did. Okay? Including the context, uh, He healed men on the Sabbath. Okay? God is still working for the salvation of men. And He said, The very works that I do bear witness of me. So there is John, and the works that he that he do and then that the father has sent me 37 and the father himself who sent me has testified of me so the third one is the father you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form but you do not have his word abiding in you now i want you to read that part again you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form the father has a form but uh, these people uh, never seen his form but you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent him you do not believe the third witness uh, the fourth witness you search the scriptures in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me so we have john we have the works we have the father we have the scriptures now why did i say five 40 but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life i do not receive honor from men but i know you that you do not have the love of god in you i have come in my father's name and you do not receive me if another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Can you imagine the statement of Jesus Christ? That is the, uh, for me, the, the fifth witness uh, about Jesus Christ, the writings of Moses. And one of that is the book of Leviticus. So again, let us praise the Lord because God has given us to understand what is the big picture message of Leviticus? It points to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Be praised unto Him. So once again, praise the Lord and thank you for giving your time. Uh, even though we are, we are still doing this live uh, message, I hope that uh, we enjoy the time as we uh, study together 
the word of God. And then, uh, before we end, once again, may I uh, invite you to ask the Lord once again to sustain us uh, these coming days. Uh, it is very important for, for all of us, brothers and sisters, to always pray to God whatever your worries in life he said trust me ask me knock seek and you'll find so we will approach the throne of grace this evening and if you are watching right now, please uh, pray with me. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, this evening, O oh Lord, we would like to thank you and praise you because you have provided some better things for us in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through Him, we can be righteous through him we can find forgiveness of all our sins through him we can be holy and because of his obedience uh, our obedience you will accept in your throne of grace not because our obedience is worthy but because of one man jesus christ the many will be made righteous. Heavenly Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are having trouble in spiritual and in physical health. Heavenly Father, remember them, O Lord. Remember uh, that they trust in you. Remember their faith. And I know, Heavenly Father, that you know what is going on in their lives. I also pray for our young people for our teenagers for our babies and for our parents and for our grandparents assembly father please be with them bless them tonight O oh lord i also pray for our husbands and wives in the church please strengthen them heavenly father those people who are looking for job to sustain and help their family heavenly father please be with them and give them peace and comfort that you have something better for them tonight heavenly father uh, we would like to thank you for the message of leviticus that right now in your very presence we have a high priest a high priest that is very sympathetic to each and every one of us thank you O lord in hearing our prayer in jesus name amen thank you once again my brothers and sisters for giving your time may the lord god bless you and may he always be with you happy midweek